As the war in the Middle East enters a new dangerous phase, the EU held its first ever EU Gulf Cooperation Council. For Europe Conversation, I catch up with Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Jassim al Budawi, and I talk to him about the agenda, trade, global security and renewed efforts for a two-state solution. Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us on the Europe Conversation. Uh, you're here for the first ever EU uh, Gulf Cooperation Summit. Lots of things on the agenda, security, global warming and so on. But I want to start off in the Middle East because we are at a very dangerous moment. We're seeing constant attacks by Hezbollah and Iran against Israel. We're seeing an immeasurable um, suffering in Gaza and also in Lebanon. Can you tell me what you see as the EU's role in this has been and can be? Definitely uh, the EU has been a responsible partner and we thank them for their role in trying to convince the Israeli side to refrain from its uh, actions against the people and the Palestinian people and again uh, or newly against uh, Lebanon. The EU has uh, helped out uh, the uh, Palestinian people. There are many members which we really admire and appreciate who have recognized uh, the Palestinian state. We hope that the EU members, uh, all of them, the 27, do uh, work toward recognizing Palestine. This would really help. And has the EU had any uh, success in speaking to Israel? And a lot of people would also point to the fact that the EU is heavily divided on this issue. Has anybody in the international community ha had any sex in convincing the uh, Israeli government to uh, uh, refrain from uh, this uh, action? Unfortunately, no. The uh, Israeli government continues its uh, policy, continues its military action against civilians in Palestine and Lebanon. They continue uh, this uh, attack. The International Court of Justice called them to stop. The UN called them to stop. The Security Council called them to stop. Every single country in the world has asked Israel to stop. They have not done it. We cannot put that pressure on any group of people or group of countries or a country. And then do you appreciate that some member states are selling arms to Israel? Member states of... of EU. Well, we hope that not only the EU, again, we, we don't want to single out a, a, a group of countries. It is a comprehensive thing. Selling arms to uh, uh, Israel at this moment is a dangerous thing. They are dealing with uh, uh, this issue uh, with a revenge-oriented mind. We heard it from Mr. Joseph Borrell. He used this terminology, revenge does not take you to anywhere. You need to stop, you need to find a peaceful solution, two-state solution, uh, an Israeli state and a Palestinian state living side by side. This is what the whole world is asking for. This is what we are asking for. Can you tell me where you see Iran's role in all of this? Um, supporting Hezbollah, sending rockets into Israel, supporting Hamas? Well, GCC has called every single player in the region for de-escalation. We have asked everybody to refrain from any activities that will fuel conflict, that will uh, rage the, the, the entire region, uh, whether it's Iran or anybody else. We have been trying to speak with them, uh, sending them message of, of de-escalation. Last week, we, ha we held our first ever ministerial meeting, GCC, with Iran. The message was clear to Iran that the GCC wants uh, a stable region. We heard the same thing from Iran, that they are calling for de-escalation. They are calling for uh, uh, no, uh, normal uh, relationship between GCC and Iran and everybody else in the region. This is what we are calling for, this is what is the effort of the GCC. Um, if there is, I mean, we've seen the, the instability obviously will lead to the rise in oil prices. Um, what will the GCC's reaction be to that? Because we've seen that in the past during the Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine, uh, gas and oil prices going right up and the OPEC plus refusing to do extra oil production. Shona, this is not the first crisis in the Middle East. And this is not the first time that the international community 
faces the question or the challenge of short in demand in oil. History is there, you can check the history, you can check the numbers. We've seen it so many times where the GCC have done their role regionally and internationally to make sure that oil is provided to everybody, that oil is within a reasonable price for the seller and the buyer. It is, uh, uh, oil is an important element for the international uh, economic uh, formula. We need to make sure that there is enough supply for everybody. Rest assured that the GCC will be there when uh, this challenge is facing the international community. So they will increase oil production? If they will do every necessary thing to secure energy for every uh, uh, partner in the world. And one of the requests from EU member states throughout the Gulf uh, summit was for greater recognition and appreciation from Gulf countries regarding the role of Russia as a global security threat, but also in particular, obviously, a threat to the security of Europe, because we haven't really seen that so far. Do you see Russia as a security threat to the world, and do you recognise its threat to Europe, given of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine? Uh, Shona, uh, the, the uh, Gulf Cooperation Council member states believe in dialogue believe in, in, in diplomacy, believe in continued engagement. And that's why we have a perfect relationship with every single partner in the world, whether it's Russia, China, the United States, the EU, Latin America, Africa, Asia. We are standing in the middle, having the same distance with everybody, and we are engaged in a dialogue with everybody. And this is the message we send to everybody is, we should refrain from using force and use dialogue, diplomacy as our to tool in discussion. Nobody should use any kind of force. I am personally from Kuwait and I know what is the use of force mean. My country was gone in few hours when Saddam invaded Kuwait in the 90s. But do you recognise Russia as a, as a security threat, given that they are bombing children's cancer hospitals in Kyiv, and dialogue hasn't worked because it didn't work to prevent Putin from invading Ukraine? Well, there is a, a, a Security Council, there is a United Nation where we all can go. It is our court. It, this is where you need to uh, address these kind of questions. You go to your General Assembly in the United Nations, you go to the Security Council and, and address it, Sean. And nobody, again, should be singled out on certain issue or certain file. It has to be a comprehensive effort, international comprehensive effort that deals with these kind of questions. What would you like to see in relation to trade? And if there were clauses in trade agreements in relation to human rights and gender equality, would that be a problem? It will not be a problem because we are very proud about, uh, very proud of our human rights record. We, the six of us, are engaged with the EU with a human rights dialogue, and this dialogue is done on a yearly basis, where uh, officials from both sides sit in a very thorough and comprehensive discussion, discussing all sorts of issues related to human rights and labour. Uh, women empowerment, child uh, uh, rights, all sorts of issues. You can also check with your uh, European colleagues on the wonderful uh, uh, outcome that comes out of, of uh, these dialogues. The six of us are engaged. It's held once in Brussels and once in each country in the, in the Gulf. Uh, also, there is another path where human rights is discussed, which is Geneva, where each country is uh, uh, reviewed every five years. And it, not only EU GCC, but the whole international community reviews each country and reviews its file every five years. We are very proud, we are very honored of what we have achieved in, in meeting the international community uh, demands on, uh, and requirement uh, on human rights. Our record is wonderful and we are extremely proud of it. I mean, a lot of people would argue with that and they say that the record is far from wonderful and doesn't meet the international standards when it comes to basic human rights, whether you're talking about Saudi Arabia and people being uh, arrested for tweeting 
um, the executions that take place frequently in Saudi Arabia. In Qatar, there was a heavy focus on uh, migrant workers uh, and the rights being taken away, tortured and so on. You know, I think people would argue that really those standards fall far below international requirements. I don't know. When you say people, what do you mean by I mean, people? Human rights I, experts. Oh, and well, then if you just look at the reports, the reporting from those countries I, 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 I would also challenge these kind of reports because I don't know who's doing them or... Well, the Human Rights it, Watch, Amnesty International, I am, the journalists themselves... I'm talking about the human rights dialogue that I'm having with the EU mm. and the review that I have every five years in Geneva. I don't know who gave these uh, organizations the right or the, the privilege to set the bar for the whole international community with the human rights. It's a dialogue. Again, we talk about dialogue. You don't point your finger at anybody. You need to respect everybody's laws, everybody's culture, everybody's religion. And we are being reviewed again every five years in Geneva. When somebody comes and says, OK, this is my standard, for human rights, you have to meet them, otherwise I will write a report about you uh, 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 criticizing you. You can write whatever report that you, you, you will write. I am a member of the international community. I will respect the international community's demand. I will continue my engagement with the demand. And pointing out the Gulf is, has become very ridiculous, really. I mean, we keep justifying ourselves for those. I, I don't really know how far they want to go. Okay, well, Your Excellency, Jassim Al-Badawi, thank you very much for joining us on the Europe Conversation. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you so much.